Indians fans awfully frustrated. It centers around, you know, the, um, the lack of the ability to sign Francisco Lindor. And it, that's just the latest in guys that uh, this franchise hasn't been able to sign. I certainly understand it. Do you understand uh, fans' frustration? Sure. I, I mean, and the, and the payroll's low. The problem with it for the Indians is always the offseason always looks bad for them. Uh, I mean, other than the year they signed uh, Evan Encarnacion, generally the offseason is about some expensive players are leaving, um, and then uh, they're going to try with kids or whatever. But, you know, this isn't a, ma a race to who has the highest payroll. It's how many games can you win and how do you play it? And I guess I would argue, let's take a look at who the Indians have let go. Now, Bauer, Trevor Bauer is the exception. You know, he wasn't going to sign here, but, you know, he continues to play at a high level. I mean, Corey Kluber now is a six ERA with the Yankees. Andrew Miller has over a six ERA with St. Louis. Um, by the way, I don't think Lindor is going to keep hitting 185, but that's what he's hitting right now. Uh, I do think he's going to have some fun in New York to figure that out if that doesn't uh, come around. But for the most part, the players, I'm talking about the Antonetti regime. You know, everybody likes to go back to, it's kind of like, our fans want to like blame people for starting the civil war, you know, or something like that. It's like, I have news for you. You know, Chris Antonetti did not trade Cliff Lee and CC Sabathia, by the way, who did bring the Indians, Michael Brantley and Carlos Carrasco, who helped them get to the world series and helped them win a lot of games later on, but he didn't trade those guys, you know? Yeah. He traded his own his Cy Young award winner, Corey Kluber. He traded him when he knew his arm was about to fall off. That's when he traded him. And I'm, I'm not being facetious about that. I mean, this guy is, is he's barely thrown 90 miles an hour now in the previous two seasons, you know, you could tell he was hurt. I will tell you this, if, by the way, Cody Allen's another one that they let go and he signed for 11 million with uh, the angels and he's out of baseball. It's not to knock these guys. Brian Shaw, they let walk away. You know, he struggled all the time with Colorado. Then he comes back here, and it looks like they might have fixed him. Um, so they're really good on knowing what to do with their pitchers. They trade Clevenger, and he, gets, he has elbow surgery. Um, I, I'm not – I'm just pointing the fact that we talked about smart front offices being a big key in football. What it is in baseball, only it's harder because you don't have as big a racer because the, there's no salary cap. Yeah, and this front office has done a very good job of developing pitchers yeah. and identifying them. Kind of the, the, the head scratcher is how have they not been able to do that with position players? You, you know, that's that, I mean, that would be interesting to go in their eternal meetings because I'm sure they have like looked at what are we doing here? Who are the coaches? Why can't we fix these guys? But the fact is, they haven't been able to do that. And you know, they've gone out, usually you have to go get a hitter from somewhere else or bring back Carlos Santana like they did a couple of years ago or that kind of thing, because I can't think of the really last good hitter. I guess you would have to say Jose Ramirez, because I was going to say he wasn't drafted, right. but he was signed by them. Um, and But the rest of these guys, when you look at like Michael Brantley, now Brantley was another guy they let go. Um, and, you know, he's, he's continued to play at a high level. I, I, I am concerned right now because I just, I don't know where they're going to get hits from. You met, you and I talked about before the show, we're both tired of seeing Jake Bowers. Jake Bowers at a hundred, I'm sorry, 811 major league plate appearances before this year with a batting average under 220. So it wasn't as if he had a lack of opportunity. He's had it before. And he looks like the same Jake Bowers that we saw a few years ago. So, you know, they want to, uh, actually, if they don't want to go to Michael uh, to uh, Bradley right now, uh, you want to play Chang at first base for a while. He's your guy. See yeah. what he see what he's got. Yeah, I, I, there. But I've seen enough of Bowers. Yeah, there, there's some intriguing options, and, and again, you need to find a, a a guy that can play center and hit regularly, and you need to find yeah. a first baseman. And right now, leading hitters hitting 250, and and it's Josh Naylor and Jordan Luplo. Are, are your leading hitters hitting 250? Yeah, right. Yeah, nobody's yeah. hitting over 250. Before I let you go, I think, by the way, you know the the, the mean. A I just heard this this morning. The average batting average in the big leagues right now is like 233. Wow, that's because everybody's paying for home runs. You better believe it. Launch angles. How's your launch angle? <laughs> you just bring it up, and you know, yeah. nobody cares. You watch a game. It's like a little league game. 
you know, 10, 12 guys strike out for, you know, on each team, you've got 27 outs and say 10 and average 10 of them are strikeouts. Um, I mean, maybe that's like, we don't need to have anybody play center field. Nobody hits a fair ball or they hit it over the wall. <laughs> 